Okay, we'll call this meeting to order. It is the March 27th Finance Committee meeting for the uh, We'll start out with public comments. If there's anyone in the public that wants to make a comment. That's not on the agenda? That's not on the agenda. Okay. Seeing none, we will uh, move to item three, the approval of the minutes from the February 27th Finance Committee meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, next item for the Chamber of Commerce Independence Day Celebration Financial Report, presentation by City Manager Alex Henderson. Uh, good evening, uh, Chairman Purcell and committee members. Uh, historically, the Chamber of Commerce has organized, fundraised, and provided the necessary labor to conduct the annual Independence Day celebration. Uh, the celebration has been celebrated on July 3rd for the past several years. The ancillary activities of the event differ from year to year, but the major component, the aerial fireworks, are consistent. Recently, the Chamber of Commerce approached staff to discuss ongoing funding of the celebration. Uh, this is historically the only festival or event that the Chamber conducts that is not profitable or cost neutral without sponsorships or revenue generated from the event. Included in your materials are income and expense summaries that were provided by the Chamber of Commerce uh, from 2017 to 2022. As outlined in our most recent agreement with the Chamber, the City provides $5,000 annually for this celebration. The Chamber is asking the Council to increase that amount to $15,000 annually, so an additional $10,000. Uh, costs for the celebration, as provided by the Chamber, include uh, Pyrotech, the aerial fireworks vendor, of uh, $30,000, uh, $30, uh, 50 percent of uh, which is due by April 4th. Uh, insurance of $1,200 and sound of $1,000. Revenues for the day of the event are limited to those who pay a gate charge to attend. Given the nature of fireworks shows, most individuals view the fireworks for free at their homes, block parties, parks, or other locations. In an effort to understand what other communities provide, staff reached out to Fresno County jurisdictions for their current arrangement with their respective chambers of commerce, and we've included those responses uh, for those who responded to, those, to that request. And that is in your packet this evening. Uh, staff will be available to answer any questions and is seeking direction from the committee with regards to the additional funding request. Uh, in addition, the committee may wish to provide direction regarding any other potential alterations to the existing agreement between the parties. Uh, and that's because if there is a change uh, to the funding, uh, we will have to amend the agreement, um, which is also included in your packet. And representatives from the chamber are also uh, will be available to answer questions from the committee. Uh, so that concludes my report, but I'm certainly happy to answer any questions you may have. Do we have uh, <clears throat> any members of the public that would like to speak to this? Ask. I'll stand, I guess. It feels weird. There's too many people at the back to stand here. Sure. All right. Um, so we've been doing this show for several years now, a lot of, a lot of uh, decades even, and I. It, the arrangement we have at the high school has changed over the years. They've taken down a lot of the fencing that went around the extra areas. So it's really hard to uh, gather gate fee uh, money because you can pretty much watch it. it used to be when the fence was around the practice field, we could keep people out of the practice field, but now they can set up in the practice field and everywhere else. And there's really no incentive for them sitting inside the bowl. So it's a lot more difficult to um, charge a gate fee. We've looked at the option of charging for parking, uh, but in cooperation with Caltrans and the police department, uh, there's not a big fan of that because it backs up um, 201 really bad uh, when we're trying to charge for parking. So uh, just in uh, respect for, for their wishes there, we well, we don't we don't want to have to do that route. Um, so, over the years, it's been harder and harder to fundraise. It's harder to harder, uh, more and more asking people for money, and we're just kind of hitting the wall on this. In the past, we've done pretty good with crowdsourced funding, but um, it's just, uh, it gets more and more expensive every year, and harder to keep asking the citizens of Kingsburg over and over. 
over again for donations. So we're hoping that uh, we might be able to get a little bit of extra from the city to help us bridge that gap. Um, and I think the, a lot of the other communities, their cities pay a pretty good chunk of the cost to what our research was also. So that's, that's our ask. <clears throat> I'd be happy to answer any questions. <laughs> so your ask is for 10,000? In addition to the, the five that we were already getting. So that puts us 15. Um, which puts us about halfway, a little bit, uh, a little bit short of halfway. But um, we've already for this year, we know um, we have some other Lions Club is uh, willing to to match some uh, um, fundraising that we can do also. So that's the 15 will get us if we can get the, the basically the Lions Club. I, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, but said 10,000, and then they'd match whatever we raised. So that could be if we go find another $10,000, that puts us at 20,000 plus the 15, puts us exactly where we need to be. So, and then that way we don't have to deal with trying to charge a gate fee and uh, all the uh, labor that comes with that for not much of a benefit. In the past, I think the best we've ever gotten on a gate fee is about 10,000. Yes. And that was when we had the bowl. We, we had the bowl. We had the fence, and we were chasing people out of the, the fields and everything. So um, the last time we charged the DC was in 2000. Yeah, 2018, and I think we maybe did about 5,000. Yeah. Yeah. So is that about when we stopped doing ground fireworks? Yeah, because then after that it was COVID, basically. COVID. And then we did the aerials just for COVID. And now the high school doesn't really want the ground show because they're worried about the track getting damaged. They've got the new track surface. We don't have the first and we don't have the people to run the ground show either. It's a lot of extra work. Because there's a way we can do it and protect the, the track, but it involves spreading out a lot of tarps and people hosing them down constantly to keep them wet and then cleaning them up the next day and don't have to we don't have the volunteers anymore what other sources of revenue do you have at that do you charge vendors i know there's some food trucks and stuff do you guys we do you guys do. get money for that what does that we, look like we do what do we get out of vendor fees? we get a, out of a, a food truck that may come in 150 dollars is what we charge and we can fit about five in the bowl. And that's usually bowl. where we put them is in the bowl. So it's about five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars that we see out of that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> question that I always get is that because I just don't know uh, is about the ground show. And I think there used to be a large sponsor, private sponsor, or someone who would help with fundraising. Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility or no? He would have been contacted. And he really doesn't want to do that now. He's more concentrated, concentrating out on his health. So he can't go out and do that for us. Yeah. Okay. You said 2018. It looks like in 2019 you made $12,000 $12, over and above your sponsors. So that would mean that's not a gate fee. In 2018, you made twelve thousand dollars. That's a GoFundMe year. When did you guys do the GoFundMe? I, I, I was I was uh, just curious what was in the Thanks. other. I gotta look at the money here. You're talking for the fireworks. Yeah, in 2019, it looked like you had twelve thousand outside of sponsors. the difference between the income and the source of services. Do you do you count so just <clears throat> so I'm clear I, I think this is where you have it. So yeah I'm sure. so is the twenty three two fifty a part of the income? Yes. That was sponsorship. Yes. yes. Right. That, right. But it's not it, that so that's included in here, right? Right. 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 So yeah. I think what Stacy's saying is there was twelve thousand dollars. There's twelve thousand other the, income. Between yeah. the income, right? Mm -hmm. So that 12,000 uh, in 19, 
that may have been carry over from the year before, possibly. So we try to we try to carry over on the fireworks ten thousand each year. Okay. Because then we can use that to pay our deposit that we have to pay in April. Oh, so we we try to hold on to ten thousand of it. I think this year we only had five thousand. We had five thousand. Last year, yeah, last year we ended up spending almost twenty thousand just out of our general fund um, to make up the difference. So really, we spent twenty five or no twenty thousand, which should have been only fifteen. If we did that that we have just for the fireworks. Fireworks is one of our only events that we actually hold on to some of the money from the year before to work for the next year. So we're always kind of paying in advance just because the deposits do so early. So that's why it may look like, well, you have $10,000 left over every year. Well, that's because it's spent the next year, <laughs> just to clarify. Is this a one-time ask or is this an annual increase ask? Are we going to change the contract? I I would like to think going forward doing it that way. Um, In what way? Doing the 15 every year. Um, so you're, wanting, you're asking us to amend the contract? To amend the contract, yes. Now, I know uh, um, Alex and I talked a while back about looking at it year to year and see how things are going. Um, and reducing an ask in regard if we need to, or you know, kind of going that way too. So just to look at it, just in case somebody decides they want to be like the previous donor we had that spearheaded it. If we find somebody that wants to step in and do that again, then obviously we don't have as big of an ask anymore. And I'm supportive of it. I I do have a little bit of concern about just automatically adding it to. The contract without, sure. without knowing that you guys are still going out and doing kind of the expectation, which is that you're going to still go out and try and fundraise. You're still going to go out and try and make that ten thousand extra dollars every time you can. And I think that if there's a little bit of like a year to year, there's more accountability for that because sure. we can ask for next year. And it's not that ten thousand dollars is the end of the world for the city. It's just that all of those city dollars do matter. And so I do want to just make sure that there is some accountability with that ten thousand dollars. Certainly, but. You know, it's ultimately not not just my call, but I, I would just like to see, because you're right, it is hard to keep asking people for more money, and I get that, but I do need you to keep asking other people for more money. <laughs> because that, that really that really is, it is a fundraising event. The, the hard regard. part with 4th of July is the majority of the fundraising ends up taking, or in 3rd of July, Independence Day, whatever. Um, the majority of the fundraising takes place the same time we're doing fundraising for car show, and Swedish festival, right? So we tend to we're going to the same people like, hey, sponsor this one and this one and this one. <laughs> so it, it almost feels I don't want to say it feels dirty, but you know what I mean. It's a lot of asking. asking. Sure. Yeah. It's a lot of asking. We did conduct a poll on Facebook. I don't know if any of you saw that. Um, it was uh, kind of disappointing. The results. I thought we'd get a little bit better feedback than we did, but... Why don't you share the results since you brought it up? Yeah, certainly. Let me pull them up here. I think I have it still, Andy. Um, we had a quite a few people ask a lot of questions. Um, there was, a, I think, a little bit of confusion where there was the thought that um, the city paid the forum. I had to clarify that the city and the chamber are not the same thing. We're very different, very separate. Um, our funds are not the city's funds and vice versa. So that, uh, I think, helped clarify some of that. But um, I get a lot of stuff on here lately. I used to have it handy. Um, we did get a few people comment saying, it had about a dozen people saying they were willing to help with fundraising and about another dozen willing to help with on the work that goes into it. I about okay, here it is. About half of the results said, you know, cut back the cost on the show so that it um, fits the budget that you have. I mean make a smaller show. Make uh, a smaller show. Shorter show. Shorter show. What were the numbers for that? How many What's people? that? How many people? Uh, it was forty nine percent, but let me see if it actually uh, two hundred votes. Many people say that. 
What's the show right now, Reggie? Like 20, 25 minutes? Uh, it's about 25, maybe. About 25 minutes, yeah. yeah. We looked at the option of maybe going a little bit shorter, too. Um, that, that is an option. Uh, the hard part is, is we have to figure out how much money we're going to have by April 4th, 4th to know how long of a show because we had to commit to it on April 4th. So that makes things a little bit more difficult. And yes, I will admit we should probably start earlier in the year on figuring out how much money we're going to come up with, but we're tackling the closest alligator to the boat. Um, so so if, <clears throat> if you make a commitment on the 4th to a 25-minute show and give them you know half of that money and then later come back and say, actually, can we amend it to 20? And then you're just coming up with the difference. Will they let you do that or no? No, they're going to charge us the full price because they actually start making the fireworks the day they sign the contract. They're going to still charge us for the fireworks. We have the option sometimes of like, hey, we can add a little bit more time, like give us another five minutes uh, as we get closer and pay for that. But uh, very rarely do they go the, they won't go the other direction. What's the labor lift? when there's not a ground show? Even without the ground show, it's probably about 100 man hours total because we're there um, the day, well, the next day, we usually have about five or six people and we're out there for a good four or five hours <coughs> cleaning up everything, plus the setup the day before, just organizing it and making sure we're there to gearing it. So yeah, it's probably about a about hundred hours without a ground show. With a ground show, you probably put that closer to 500. My guess, it's a lot of extra labor. We usually have, what, 20 or 30 people just manning the tarts. Yes. Yeah. That'd be men that are doing the tarts and watering them down. So just so everyone knows, um, cause I don't know that I really comprehended this until I was over at the chamber. Can you explain how many of those are volunteer hours? All of them? Because uh -huh. that's, for me, that's a huge factor because I don't like giving more city dollars towards something that's not making any money. But I think that the only reason it exists and people need to understand it is because the amount of free labor mm -hmm. that's taking place at the chamber. I had no idea how much work you guys truly, truly do, not just for the Independence Day, but for all of it. I mean, that's, it's, it's a crazy amount of work. If, that you're not going to be paid for. Exactly. If you look at that, I mean, we have two part-time employees, and they pretty much their office hours are the about all they all they get paid for. And then when it comes time for all the events, it's you know nine board members, and and they're all we're all volunteers. That's who ends who we land with. Um, we had 39 people say just don't have the show. We did have 71 people say they're willing to pay an entrance fee, but we also had 49 people saying they just left them home. <laughs> so, and I mean, that was, we didn't actually have, when you look at that, that's 406 total votes across that, and when you have 13,000 people in town, that's a really small sample. So I don't know if this will be approved by chamber by April 4th, will it? Or by by council. <clears throat> Fifth. So can you guys float that if it's approved? I mean, why? Well, I, I guess you guys are taking the risk this year either way because council will not have it approved by that time. So even if finance committee approves, I think we're just approving to send it to council, which is going to put you guys a day behind. Do you guys have the financing to cover that? Well, I can call Pyro Tech and if it's a day or two different. I've they worked with us long enough. They'll wait. I have a feeling that, yeah, two days isn't a big deal to them to make that final decision. Yeah, I mean, I think you can have, I mean, just separate from the city discussion, <clears throat> I think like the Lions Club would be willing to consider something annually. But the Lions Club, I mean, from what I was told, they want to write a check, not run the show. <laughs> we have a... So you know what I mean, like that. People that that's the case. So. Right, and so if you, but but if that's the case, then you know if you, and I also think that, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know who else you you guys talk to to get funding from, but if, 
you know, if Lions Club is the largest one or something like, I mean, maybe there's a benefit to having it being called, you know, the Lion, you know, something sponsored by that because then, yeah. because then people do separate it from the city and from the chamber and then they're more willing to donate and, you know, the Lions Club is a C3 or whoever who might be a C3 right. that you could run donations through, I think gives you better potential. We have a, we, I have a press release, I guess, that I'm working on based on how this conversation goes. Mm -hmm. so that's going to play into that. Like, we do have a, a service club that's willing to donate $10,000 in matching funds. So, not everybody come up with $10,000 kind of thing. And um, we're running into, as you mentioned, they're willing to write a check, but not necessarily put the work or do work also, which I mean, I'm perfectly fine with, well, thank you very much anyways, but um, we're seeing that a lot with all of our events, and it's actually turned into a new cost that we have to come up with where we actually have to pay people to help us put them on. Um, we're making donations to service clubs, to youth clubs, to people that are willing to come out and, you know, Boy Scouts come out and help with all the trash cans the day of an event, we write them a check to get them to do it. Yeah. And I'm not saying the lines yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't volunteer together. I just think it's sort of, they just didn't want to, you know, I, I wasn't here then, but that, that's why they got out of the watermelon festival right. essentially was like, hey, it just became this huge lift for, for them too. And so it doesn't mean they won't help, uh, you know, with, with physical labor, but just. The lines club that we want to help already from Swedish Festival to Veterans Day, yeah. they're, they're a go-to caterer <laughs> for a lot of that, so. For pancakes. For pancakes. Mm -hmm. yep. Everybody loves pancakes. Uh, do we have any more committee discussion on it? Other members, if we have an opinion. I would like to increase it, but I feel like it's two times more what we're contributing. Compared to other cities, I know it's really in other cities, they don't contribute. So maybe like increase it to double the amount, ten thousand, I'll feel comfortable. So and requiring more like input and maybe if they have food trucks start increasing their fees because it seems like hundred and fifty for food truck seems like really low. For you know, start increasing it all around it and come up with the the difference. Yeah, so really contributes seventy five hundred, which I think is half of their 15 minute show. So, so we're going like double what we're going Well, that's just like what, I mean, that's just, like, yeah, that's what they have, right? So I think they have, a, they have a 15 minute show. I think Sanger does more too, but they didn't respond to my inquiry, but um, it's just, you know, but like, you know, Club is uh -huh. done, sponsored by the Kiwanis Club entirely, right? So they must go out and do their own fundraising. And I know a lot of these cities have them in locations where they can charge admission. Well, it's at uh, Buchanan High School, and I mean, they charge admission to get in there. They charge a lot. Um, Reedley, it's the same thing. Uh, Selma, I know they do the same thing. They charge admission into their, their bowl. But the way their show is set up and the way the event, the way the facility is set up, it's a lot easier to charge admission and actually be effective with it. The high school just has too many holes. <laughs> There's too many gates or no fences or what have you. So. Practice field holds a lot of people mm -hmm. that bring their pop ups. And okay, I, I have an issue with not charging us for parking. You go to the football game in Kingston, you're paying for parking and you're paying at the gate. So I do think, I mean, I, I support, you know, increasing or considering increasing this, but I really kind of think you guys maybe should consider, you know, because you're right, people are enjoying it. They still have a very nice seat sitting there at the high school, mm -hmm. and I, I don't think it, it's not unusual because they're doing it for every football game. How many people do you think show up in cars? Roundabout. Well, I know they fill the park, all the parking lots, and they fill the neighborhoods. So someone. I don't do not 
Do you have any idea how many cars know. it holds? I don't know. I should have. I'm, I can reach out to the boosters because I've, it's the it's the music boosters that that yeah. does it, um, which I'm a part of. I think the main think to parking lot at the high school is like 350 cars. Oh. For some reason, that number's in my head. And how much would you charge? That would be the five thousand. Yes, and I think for football games, I think they're charging five bucks. Yeah, that makes sense. I think we end up with quite a bit more cars at the fireworks show than the high school does for a football game. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of the concern of the traffic management of it, and then you have the people that get in the line to pay or to go into the parking lot but don't want to pay so then they end up parking everywhere else and yeah I think just logistically that it gets a little bit complicated but I, I we've talked about charging for sure that's definitely something we've looked at so you guys are looking at increasing the city's contribution to 15,000 and you're Potentially looking at a ten thousand dollar match mm -hmm. on a thirty thousand dollar event, you're going to end up with thirty five thousand dollars. Correct. It's both thirty thousand for the fireworks, and then it's another almost three thousand in other expenses like the DJ and insurance and all that that we have to have. And paying people to help. Yeah, and then help. Yes. Finding help. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm supportive of it uh, for a year trial run to see. Okay. I mean, I would say, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a question of <clears throat> maybe we, you know, maybe we amend it or we have a sort of a side letter amendment or something like that so that we have it codified. But there are some things that we probably need to clean up in this. And there are like some things that the chamber is supposed to be doing in it, like uh, coming to the council meetings and doing some of those reports that I think would be. You know, I think that would be appreciated by the council, you know, especially when there's a, diff a separate ask. So, um just some of those things that we should, you know, on both our ends should clean up and make sure that we're following. I think this whole thing should just be a side letter. I don't know that we're in a position to change that professional services agreement in this short order, are we? Well, yeah, I mean, it's be a one time. It specifically just calls out the five thousand dollars for the Independence Day celebration, so we can look at that and just maybe for do like a side letter for a one year thing or something and then re and then with an agreement to reevaluate or I, I do think that this whole contract needs to get a once over yeah I agree. yeah there's some events that have changed names over the years yes yeah. because they don't they're not applicable anymore or what have you and, and I think I I would really like to hear public input on the overall contract as we go forward to what events are important to the people that appear still because that you know those things change too but we are in a little bit of a time crunch for Independence Day. Any other committee comments? Oh, good. Yeah, good. Linda Nielsen. I'm on the chamber now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I live at Park Place right across the street. So I observed last year on purpose. There were many, many close calls of accidents of people and cars because that practice field was open up for people to go in and sit there. So then the cars were trying to find places to park. So they were making U-turns in our gate. Uh, they were, we heard many skids and stuff like that, which causes danger to people. And these people, most of them are from out of town. They're not from Kingsburg because those people all are sitting in their yards. So, I think we need to evaluate this event um, if we're not making money on it, if we're not bringing in some revenue. And I have a big thing about the Chamber of Commerce supporting our commerce. And we talked about it at a meeting that the 4th of July event is a community thing, but it brings no business into Kingsburg because everybody closes for this event. I'm just saying it needs to be real, truly evaluated. So, are, just to clarify, are, are you opposed to the event in totality, or are you opposed to them? I'm opposed to the city to, giving more money towards it. I'm opposed to incurring more debt. 
That's what I'm afraid. For the city or for the chamber? For the chamber, for the event, or whatever. We're scrounging around now trying to find people to help us. Not only to help serve, and I'm a senior, so I'm not going to stand out in a parking lot and collect money. I did that several years ago on the chamber board. Thank you very much. Um, just, yeah, I think the whole thing, we need to evaluate it. I just don't like seeing us scrounge around every year for that event. And we get tired after the car show and the Swedish festival. So does everybody else. I mean, a lot of people. So, yeah. Something to Any other discussion? I'm not a member of the board, but <coughs> hired a trolley driver, so I think it would be really cool if you guys um, wanted to maybe expand parking if we got the trolley to bus people to the event so that they could spread out, maybe park downtown and shop, eat, things like that. Rentals are online. <laughs> we are we're, we're very happy that we have drivers now, yeah. so we can, <laughs> we can actually use it. So uh, yeah. that is something we we've, we've talked a lot about is utilizing that for events to expand parking options. Yeah. We all know parking is fun, yeah. <laughs> but I won't, I won't open up that can. <laughs> well, so, this is a really nice event for the community. I don't think we want to. Yeah, go away. Yeah, I, I, I want to keep it. I mean, that's. I think we all have an opinion, and that's that's mine. I like it. I like I like sitting there with my family and watching fireworks. Do you go to the fireworks? Do you go to the I, I, I mean, I'm the bookkeeper, and I thoroughly enjoy sitting in my front yard watching them go off. I get it. I think that's yeah, only there because I have to be. <laughs> I mean, when I've had to be too, where you come the next day to clean it up. But it sure would be nice if it wasn't open to anybody and we just spent a minimum amount so the town could see fireworks. Well, the minimum amount is $35,000, right? No, so we can cut it. It goes down if we don't have to have the DJ. We don't have to have no. the insurance because we just shoot off a show and still thirty thousand dollars, right? It's, still it's just less labor. It's just less labor. Mm -hmm. It's just less work for the chamber. Yeah. Doesn't really save much money. Yeah, that's the difference, right? I mean, I, I get the point that to Linda's point that it's a maybe maybe people that are going to the bowl are not community members because most community members are sitting at their house, but there's a lot of community members that sit at their house because they like it. <laughs> so they still like the show, right? I mean, they, yeah. they still they still like the they still like it for the community. So that yeah. mm -hmm. it, maybe maybe your ask is to not have the chamber involved anymore. Well, everyone lives where they can see it in their backyards in town either. Yeah. Right. I don't know if it's necessarily that it's it's kind of a it's kind of a gray area, I think, for yeah. the chamber to be involved in it because it is more of a community benefit thing than it is necessarily a commerce-related thing. Sure. Um, it's not really, though, because it's in your contract that there's the 4th of July Independence Fest. Well, there's so that really yeah. gray area yeah. with the contract. <laughs> no, I don't disagree with you on that. But as we're, as we're evaluating the events that we have right. and what we want to do, we're, we're really looking at it as what bottom line, look at this from I'm a chamber member paying dues. What do I get as a chamber member out of the, this, any one of the events, right? Sure, but you have to look at also the chamber receives money and stays afloat because of city dollars. Correct. And so part of the chamber is going to do what the city is asking because that's who's right. paying the bills. Right. Right. So it's, it's fine. And that's why it we're is. talking about looking at the, looking right. at the contract. No, I agree. Mm -hmm. Is this beneficial to everybody? Any other committee discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion if someone has one. I'll make a motion to send it to council for review. Okay. Um, have council take a look at it and then make a determination. But that's going to put you guys on the hook for this or to figure out a way because that won't that won't get approved by the fourth. That's uh, April 5th this year. Is that meeting? Correct. Okay. 
And it's still okay to get that on for the April 5th meeting? Yeah. You good with that? You will be there. So, so your motion is for to the 15K? My motion is for the one-time 15K with an overall contract review in the future. Okay. I'll second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Then you guys please attend on the 5th as well. <laughs> what time does it start? Six. Six. I should know this right now. Yeah. If you uh, want to push Frank, you can uh, make it a twofer and we can do a fiber update at the same one so you don't have to come to the next meeting. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And the calendar's getting filled out. Yeah, all right. Yeah, well, <laughs> I got access to it since so the start. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item is the strategic planning update, the consideration of agreement with the professional facilitator, presentation by Christina Window, uh, assistant city manager. Hi, Chairman um, Purcell and finance committee members. Um, we actually have a committee member who was on the original strategic plan, I believe, or at the workshop. Uh, so in 2018, we hired a consultant to help facilitate our strategic plan. It was a five-year plan, and um, there's a, currently an attachment in your packet if you want to review it. Um, but it came, part of that process um, helped the city develop our vision, our values, our core goals, um, and our mission statement. And so we are in the process of looking at what the next five years looks like and whether we need to modify and update our plan. So staff has met with two really well-known um, consulting firms who can help facilitate the community input, the council input, staff input, um, and help us get a new plan together. Uh, the quote for pricing um, is included on the executive summary of your packet. Um, when group, the Mor Morando group, gave a submit uh, on the low end of $18,100 uh, for city council input, city manager input, and the public's input. If we wanted to include department heads in the interview process, there would be an additional fee. And if we wanted the um, consultant to provide us with a strategic plan that's completely uh, visually as well as um, content, um, then the total cost would be $24,700. Um, all of that would be included in the Center for Organizational Effectiveness quote. Um, there are some differences, however, between the way the consultant set up their process. So, for example, uh, the Maharando group um, does like three community input meetings. One of them is invitation only for like businesses, um, elected officials, people on committees, employers in the area, people who we think we would want specific input from, and then two community um, workshops. Uh, the second group, the Center for Organizational Effectiveness, they don't have as much robust public input. Um, they do like a two-hour workshop. Um, so, so there is a difference there in how much community feedback we're seeking through those two groups. Um, but a note from our plan, our original plan in 2018, it was an all-day workshop on a Saturday, and that we didn't have members of the community come in and provide input. So maybe there's more people in the community now who would want to provide that input. I don't know, but. It was open to the public, they just didn't come. Nobody right. came. No interest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it ended up being yeah. council members um, and department staff. So. Can we host that or they host that? We host it here, but they facilitate the process. They facilitate the input. Um, they take notes. They will both provide us with a draft narrative that we can, um, you know, shape and um, eventually... 
on the Gerardo group shows narrative only, no draft. Um, Is that just not written down in there? So the organizational effectiveness group will give us a draft for each stage of the process. Oh. Um, the Miranda group will just give us a draft and a final narrative, yeah. but not based on each meeting. It'll just be like a comprehensive. Is, is it useful to have more straps? I don't think we had, when we did it in 2018, we didn't, it didn't come that way. It was more of a, they put it all together at the end, so. Mm -hmm. um, d d d during that process, did you, do you, I mean, do you feel that it would have been useful to have more um, During the um, 2018 process, we did an online survey for community input, and that's where we yeah. really got all of our community input. So we didn't need a draft because we okay. organized the survey, so we had all the input. So it would kind of be useful mm -hmm. to have. And we, they may just decide that one of the ways to engage the community is with another survey. Um, but what's in your packet is what's guaranteed in the cost breakdown. And that's a part of what you know we want to talk about too is what's the what's the committee's thoughts, you know, what would be the council's preference in terms of you know what's an appropriate amount of community input. Um, only because you know we put these things out, you know, or invite people and they don't necessarily come, so you don't want to spend a bunch of money on the you know, on that, if, if there's not going to be input, or are there other ways that we that we get that? I, I like the, usually people show up and you invite them, mm -hmm. you know, particularly, specifically, yeah. right? Like, whether that's business community or whoever that is. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we can, we still have our, the ability to do online surveys that we can work closely with either of the groups as well. Yeah. So, I, you know, mostly, I mean, obviously the, the costs are pretty, Pretty telling the differences, but um, I, I'm more interested in just making sure that this group and then the council um, make sure it's as robust as they uh, would want it. I mean, I was happy with the document that we got in 2018. I think we've done a good job of utilizing that, and um, you know, I think the the big portion is making sure that we're you know, hearing from constituency and then hearing from the council on and department heads on where we want to be in the next five to ten years. What are our what are our goals for the next five to ten years different um, now than they were, you know, five years ago, right? Like I don't, you know, one of our one of our goals is to improve public safety, and I don't, I wouldn't say that that's ever going to go away. You're not, you're not, you're never looking for that to go away, but you know, measuring has helped. Us accomplish a portion, you know, a good portion of that, right? And so, do we does that get refocused into a different goal? So, if not a member of the committee, of the department head, uh, are they included as an additional fee? Is that just a that uh, would that be a survey or is that um, that's not per that's not per person? I no, that's not under total for all department heads. For all departments, yes. Okay. For one-on-one -on -one interviews. For one-on-one. -on -one. So we would all... Total. So it's not... Because this one says 10 interviews, so I was right. thinking it was going to be... Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. I, yeah. I don't it think it makes any sense. Everyone. It doesn't make any sense to not include the department. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, the original that's proposal... that's we're going to all hold accountable. So right. <laughs> right. We're the, yeah, <laughs> right. The original <laughs> proposal doesn't include department heads. So we went back and asked them for oh, another okay. quote to see... I think he was thinking that they would he would get it from the department heads as part of the workshop because they will be in the workshop, whereas maybe they're they can be in the workshop and have a so we asked for an additional fee yeah. in terms of what I remember it's the workshop. I don't remember mm -hmm. getting an interview on one on one. And we might not have in twenty eighteen. I don't yes. honestly I don't recall. I was trying to no yeah. so it was pretty much the workshop yeah. and that was very useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's very useful, but also one on ones can be mm -hmm. revealing. When right. You right. Can get known. Who did our uh, strategic plans back then? So uh, we used RGS, or I think 
it's regional government services, and they did a good job with the um, with the actual facilitation, but there were some issues in terms of getting the documentation on the back end and helping us sort of with our goal setting as well, and so that's part of the reason they're not included this time. I really liked the invitation meeting. No, but few people will come to a workshop, especially on a Saturday, mm -hmm. and it w would be, I mean, it, to at least do what we can to engage mm -hmm. the community as best we can. I like that approach. A few of them will show, you know, I'm, I'm not everybody, so, will, but I mean, a few, I would think we'd get some valuable input. Uh -huh. That would be. Uh, I like, I, I just like that approach. That, mm -hmm. uh, after the community. Yeah, so we are recommending that group, the Miranda group, it's more cost effective and there's more community input. Um, that's, I guess, our ask to the finance committee is your recommendation um, to bring it to council. But um, I've included like examples. So if you really want to look at the details of it, you can look at their work product to help evaluate. My, my question, maybe for the finance department, and then I guess for the assistant city manager also, <clears throat> is this worth $25,000? My answer is yes. But uh, the only uh, question I have is, has any other city used this uh, company? Yeah, they have a So list if them. you look at the... Um, it's on the cover letter, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Bakersfield, Costa Mesa, Fillmore, Monterey Park, Norwalk, Pico Rivera. Yeah, and I mean, I mean locally, so we can add... Um, I, I looked for that too, I didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. um, if, so there's a list on page 19 of the Miranda Group proposal um, for everywhere in California um, from 2021, 2022, and 2023. Um, they are a California firm. And then if you look at I don't know if I'm even going to find the next proposal now. Looks like Bakersfield is the closest one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure where it's at. Like it. Are you looking for the centers or who are you looking for? Yeah, I'm looking for the centers list. Um, letter anyway. I don't know if they have a. They, they sent us examples, but I don't know if they included it in their. In their like we included the Carlsbad example because they sent us four or five of them. I don't right. think they gave us a list of, rec, of references. But in fairness, we've used the center for the last four or five years on a lot of our like management team retreats and things like that. So I'm familiar with them. Um, yeah. I was a little surprised at the at the price. Twice as much. Yeah. This is something we plan on doing maybe like every four or five years. Five. Five years. I'm sure that so, there are. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I think so. Yes. Especially because it not only informs our strategic goals, but it's also how we hold the departments accountable and how we help them plan their operations. And every year as part of the budget, um, department heads put performance measures with actual data in there to, to show that they are meeting the objectives that, you know, council and this group created. Can I speak to that being a council member that was there for that. It was, I, I found it very useful. Mm -hmm. It was a good use of time to work directly with the department heads, mm -hmm. to think, to recognize what's important to them, to recognize 
you know, for the council to come together and to really, I think it was a good bonding experience, for lack of a better word, but it was, because we all, you know, united all of us under, you know, common goals. It, it was a really good exercise. Second back. <laughs> okay. We have any more committee discussion? If not uh, entertain a motion. Uh, okay, I will make a motion to um, recommend the Morano Group that we move forward with doing a strategic plan and use Morano Group. Make the second motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Uh, six other business. Does anybody have any other business? Mm -hmm. um, just a couple items that we're going to be coming back with. Uh, we're going to be bringing back the, we're updating our credit card policy as part of the budget process. So that will come um, uh, to the to the finance committee as well, uh, as well as all the other financial policies, which is, usually occurs when we are in the middle of our budget. And then, um, so you'll be seeing that in the future meeting as well. Okay, anything else? Not at uh, 5.51, we will adjourn. Thank you.